XCOM 2 is a turn-based strategy game made by Fireaxis Games. It's an approved sequel in almost every single way, but with a few minor issues that ultimately holds it back from being greater. I don't want to start off with the negatives with this game, but there's one serious issue that you should know before purchasing the game. This game is horribly optimized for PCs, even though it's a PC-only exclusive. I swear, Fire Axis games are the smartest boneheads in the business. They make extremely great and creative games, but they always find some way to mess it up, and it's usually something extremely obvious and stupid like optimization or game-breaking bugs. This game runs horribly on most mid-range computers. Not only does this game spike your GPU, but it freezes and crashes constantly. XCOM 2 specifically chose to be a PC-only title, and somehow ended up feeling like a mediocre console port. I've had the game crash a total of 20 or more times in one campaign. I was forced to change my graphics to medium because of all the frame rate dips I was suffering. I'm not really sure if 2K Games wanted to rush the game out in an unpolished state or Fire Axis was just unaware of the issue, but it's a huge problem. I'm not going to harp on the bad optimization any longer, but I just find it ironic that a game based around luck has a 50% chance of working correctly on your computer. That all being said, this game is still a phenomenal game that will totally have you addicted for hours, if you get the game to work on your computer, of course. There's a certain magic in this one. You always feel tense with every enemy you encounter, every time you upgrade your equipment. Man, you feel so badass, you can't wait to get out there and kill those alien SOBs. And of course, pray that your characters aren't killed in the process. I won't get into spoiler territory besides some minor details, but apparently winning the war in the first game meant that you actually lost and now that the aliens have taken over. There's a book out there that explains what happened, but it's not entirely clear in the game. You just kind of have to accept it. So now you become an ET hating terrorist group, but since they're aliens, it makes terrorism okay? Being on the offensive side this time around does make the game have a different tone from the first one, which is really great, and it makes it just, it's not just a rehash of what we've already experienced. The one thing that the game does a lot better than its predecessor is its revamped class system. It's relatively the same as the first one, but all the classes have gone through a complete overhaul. Without getting into specifics, each class feels very well balanced, both with, both with their own pros and cons class feels unique, and they're no longer just the guy with the shotgun, or the medic, or the sniper, or the heavy dude. Sure, the classes follow these formats, but they have a different enough traits that you'll be able to use each class for specific circumstances. No longer will you be able to give your sniper the plasma sniper rifle and completely decimate everything in your path. This game also introduces a brand new stealth mechanic at the start of at the start of almost every single mission, you will be in concealment. This basically gives you the opportunity to sneak past enemies or ambush them for some devastating damage. I personally feel like the stealth in this game could have been implemented a little better. I just use concealment to ambush enemies, never to complete a whole mission in stealth. And from what I can tell, it seems impossible because each objective usually has enemies surrounding it, making it difficult to get there without being detected. I think I would have liked if you could use sound to draw enemies to a location and flank them for some serious damage. That being said, I still feel like the stealth is a welcome addition and can be definitely be built upon in future expansions. Gameplay itself feels a lot smoother and cleaner than the first one, and is the reason why the game is so acclaimed. It makes its strategy and luck beautifully. Each engagement feels tense, but if you play your cards right, and of course have a bit of luck on your side, you'll be able to overcome anything the game throws at you. And trust me, the game will throw a ton at you. All the enemies have been completely redesigned, and they and they all feel like a legitimate threat this time around. The game has removed all the low health grunt-like enemies like the thin men and the small sectoids and replaced them with more challenging enemies. The grunt-like enemies never really felt like a threat in the original game. They were just there to be nuisances or target practice. Sure, this makes the game a lot harder, but it's better for it. And yes, the game can feel a bit more challenging, but with the classes being so universal this time around, I feel like I've been able to strategize and really plan out my attacks a lot more. With all that being said, the game is still a little rough around the edges. One thing that I'm a bit iffy on is the new map system. I like the idea, but I feel like there's a lot of wasted potential here. For one, the beginning of the game tends to hold your hand a bit too much for my taste. 
Basically, the map system is used to go to a location to scan the area for resources or to establish contact with a continent. I think I'd have liked if the game had used its setting to its advantage and had some sort of a propaganda system where you would have to convince people to join your side or to expose the truth about the aliens. It would have given the game another interesting mechanic and I hope they do this for the expansion. Also, the game really seems to rush you through it, even when you don't want to. There's always an avatar clock breathing down your neck, and the best way to decrease it is doing the main storylines. This usually means the ending will just kind of sneak up on you, even if you're not necessarily ready for it. There were so many autopsies I missed and a lot of spaces left on the ship to fill. A major complaint by people is that most of the in-game missions have timers. This practically forces you to rush through the mission and you won't have time to plan out a decent strategy. While this isn't a huge issue on the lower difficulties, on the higher ones, especially on Iron Man mode, this would be annoying as hell. The game also has a ton of miscellaneous bugs like rebel blowing up before the explosion goes off, long load times, AI shooting at a target but just because he's marked even though he has no chance of hitting it, PSI clouds disappearing randomly even though they're still there, Random, randomly the sound muffles, those type of things. Fire in the hole! They found us! In all, I feel like XCOM 2 is a true sequel to the original reboot. It's not afraid to have a different tone while still feeling like the XCOM we know and love. This game is easily worth the price of admission, but you may want to wait till some of the patches roll out. Well, that's just my opinion anyway, guys. What did you think? Did you uh, did you think the sequel was better than the original? Uh, what did you what did you like? What didn't you like? Uh, leave a comment. I'll pretty much respond to pretty much anything. You know, if anyone actually watches this video. Till then, later.